Uh, Brian, first things first, how's the head? Head is good. Yeah? Uh, yeah. Um, got through training Monday, Tuesday, day off today. A um, bit more, probably a bit more vigorous tomorrow. A um, couple of collisions and hopefully uh, good to go for the weekend. Looking weekends. forward to those collisions or a little bit kind of, oh, <laughs> Always don't. excited about collisions, <laughs> always. Uh, no, it's, listen, I'm uh, well used to it at this stage. So yeah. I've had a few of these sort of situations in the past and... Um, and I don't worry. I'm not worried about this one. Usually, you know, there's, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna pass yeah. a fitness test or not, uh, there's kind of a bit of mugginess to the head or whatever. But I've I've had none of that this week. Yeah, because like there's all obviously been such a big outcry about concussion in various sports over the last couple of years that at this point, I don't know if everybody realizes how strenuous the, the tests are, and that's unbelievably so. And I think, in in fairness, and particularly, you know, I, I know that we've got a very strong medical team in the Irish setup, and there's no way they'd allow a player go out. Uh, if there was a- any uh, a- any kind of um, questions over his yeah. uh, his his ability to play or wh- you know whether he was up to it or not, so um, I I'll have to go and do a cog test, which I've done I, I did at the start of the year, which is uh, uh, kind of an elaborate test, uh, computer test of shapes, images, numbers, um, memory, recollection, so on. Yeah, and. I'll have to do that again tomorrow and try and score as highly as I would have done pre-season. So, uh, it, you know, that's it'll tell pretty quickly as yeah. to whether I'm up to speed and whether the brain is reacting the same way. Have you seen the footage of Keane Healy shoving you out of the way at the start of the rook yet? I have. Yeah, I have. <laughs> have you forgiven him for that yet? No, no. I'm all, I'll always encourage someone like him uh, um, taking on, uh, you know, some of those front rowers peeling around the sides of rooks. No, I, yeah. I, I encourage that. And that, that means you've seen the footage of Debatty and those tackles back as well. He's a big boy. He is a big man. He is. They they don't make them uh, much bigger than him. So uh, I probably uh, could have chosen a bit smarter some of my tackles. But yeah, you, those those sort of guys you really need to be firing yourself at their ankles, not yeah. trying to hit them uh, tr- hit them hard because uh, gravity, you know, has taught me one thing. When you when you see a force that size <laughs> against a force this size, yeah. there's only going to be one winner. I think he's nineteen and a bit stone. Uh, when you're looking back at those videos, are you going, ah, oh, that's sore? Like, are you still feeling the pain? Is it a, a reflex kind of pain that? that exists or are you actually just going no. that's a bad tackle I should have tackled better or yeah you kind of look and you go oh, technique wasn't brilliant there or um, um. no I, I think what you do I, I, I there's a I think all rugby players have an ability to um, to forget what the, what the pain of being involved in the game was because when you're watching it you feel fine oh no I'm grand that was never actually that bad yeah so I think um, we don't know we switch into that I don't know it's the one time that I'll try and compare to um, to uh, childbirth where apparently um, women forget careful um, now no, wi- I know I know women forget what that pain was like um, that's why they do it again so yeah. it's it's um, that's big on, a very, on a very slightly um, different scale should we keep we, digging we, here we, for we a couple also, minutes we also um, forget what it's like actually it's really interesting you talk about the training the brain for that because um, talking to professional sports people about big defeats or really dis- disappointing things a lot of them have an ability not to dwell on it for too long um, and I'm kind of thinking about this whole campaign looking back at the, the matches it's um, a six point defeat and a four point defeat and a draw those are really close games with teams shorn of players through injury and, and uh, strength and depth and that would strike me as actually being one of the most frustrating Six Nations campaigns perhaps of your entire career yeah, I would. Uh, I would agree. Obviously, the, the game against Scotland was unbelievably frustrating. It was a game we uh, would, you know, nine times out of ten uh, have have won, and we managed to, um, you know, play all the rugby and not uh, get get the result at the at, uh, at final whistle. Um, you know, not. Uh, I was embar- I was asked, was was I embarrassed by the the performance and the result? No, absolutely not, because I thought we played pretty well at times. We just lacked that clinical nature. Against France and England, we haven't really had the days to be able to play any rugby so we've uh, we weren't great against England they they, they deserved their victory against France we kind of threw it away uh, and we should have been able to close out we probably needed one more score in that second half to be able to uh, yeah. to to bury them and we didn't get that and that just gave them the sniff and once you're once they're within seven point range you know they they'll always fancy their chances you need that eight point buffer yeah uh, uh, trying to put that in context of the rest of the Six Nations campaigns though there I don't know is it actually easier to take a mullering from a team and go okay we got that wrong they were better than us where that's not the case in these games and in, in this campaign like you could very easily be heading into this match with a grand slam on the line. You could. There's lots of coulds and ifs and maybes. This strikes um, me as one of the biggest ifs and maybes campaigns, though. Just maybe so. I don't know. Like I, you know, people talk back to um, even the 07 uh, 
Six Nations when we lost to France in the last minute in Croke Park and yeah. you know, people say oh we should have had a slam that year but if you win that game that adds different pressures to the subsequent games which so, the team might not have been built exactly. to design exactly so you react yeah. differently to those to those stresses so um, you can't ever you know you can't ever dictate exactly how something is going to wor- have worked out yeah. you know off the back of it sets result A or reactions. result B yeah exactly yeah. so um Again, yeah, I, think I think that's a peculiar thing about sports people though, that you can do that because the rest of us who are just watching the games are going Jesus this could have if then and in our minds it's all a straight line but you no, guys are no, no, capable no. it doesn't going. work that way it doesn't yeah. work that way and um, definitely when we got to 09 and we um, the, the pre- we won the first three games and then we had Scotland away and then Wales and start, people started talking about the Grand Slam decider and that that was a really tricky one over in Scotland um, and we still managed to win it and then did have that that, that uh, great day in Cardiff. But you, you look at, the, at this year's Six Nations and England was always going to be a huge game. Once we won in, in Wales, England was going to be a huge game. And I've talked before about Six Nations is about momentum and building momentum. And it does help when you win those close ones and you look at England, they've won those close ones. Yeah. And now look where they are. They've they've got a Grand Slam to play for at the weekend. Yeah, it, it's... Um and that's the matter of inches that kind of happens. It's just such small margins at Test Rugby, and I, I, you know, it, um, it is something that you hear. It's almost cliche, like the the the, the margins are tiny, and you hear uh, any given Sunday the inches and all that 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 big rant. Yeah, uh, it is. It, the, the 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 margins for for victory and defeat in in close games when teams are very evenly matched can be the bounce of a ball one missed tackle one lapse in concentration someone just slightly fatigued someone being nudged yeah. uh, you know off the ball um, penalty or otherwise um, matter of uh, the, the official's decision so those small little calls you can't um, you can't uh, you get some and you do you know lose other ones yeah and as a result of those the gloom around the team is at a level that I'm, I'm not really sure I, maybe after the World Cup in France, there was the kind of same level of negativity and gloom. Does that filter through to the players that that the chatter is negative at the moment? Janie, it's we're a world away from 2007, where I know. we are now. Um, uh, um, players, players read newspapers. They are asked at press conferences questions, and when they see the negative spin being put and not being asked very many positive questions, that has an effect on them for sure. Um, and it's uh, it's difficult individually, but collectively you try and um, and put all that to one side and focus as to what's what you're in control of. Yeah. And um and everything else is um is hearsay or is out of your control. So you know wh- what you can do in training for the week and what you can do in the in the match is one hundred percent in the control of. Of, of that 23 players and that management for the course of the week so focus on that and whatever comes at the end of that you have to uh, accept because you know that, that's that's been your doing Yeah you, you talked about um, it's difficult as in individuals is this something you got better at as your career has gone on or is it something that actually is, is always at the same level of difficulty filtering out what's going on around you? I think you uh, you learn to uh, understand yourself what works for you Um you know how much you can you know switch in and out like even things like um traveling to to uh, to a game I, I tend not to switch on until i arrive at the ground and yeah and come back in from walking around the pitch that's when i probably switch in switch on because i don't have the capacity to concentrate for two and a half hour salad <laughs> so i try and have a laugh and just a bit of a joke and that's how i relax into yeah. into test games so over the course of playing uh, you know, a lot of years you you know what works for you yeah and try and t- test the different things listen to music before no that's not really me I like the conversation with people and um then you you know everyone else is listening to music around you so you have to tell one person they're not allowed yeah because they need to talk to you <laughs> okay who do you pick yeah well Rob Carney sits beside me at the back so of the gets... bus now so yeah Carnes was never big into into music um going to and from games and um yeah he's kind of likewise you just yeah he, um he just likes to have a bit of a laugh and have a chat about who's uh, who's out in the streets or what the atmosphere is like or you know the police escort how mad it is or how brutal it is yeah. depending on where you are if you're in Italy 
uh, they're usually insane. If you're in Scotland, they're absolutely terrible. There's no 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 um, there's no stopping at, uh, at, at or the stopping at red lights. So th- there's no real point in okay, police yeah. escorts. <laughs> so just those, those sort of um, mundane conversations. Yeah, but, but it know, keeps you from actually exactly like, yeah. from r- really thinking too hard about it. Mm, I am, we're big fans of Enda McNulty here in the program. We've had him on uh, over the years, and I've noticed that you've name checked him in various interviews. Was this all part of? Is that the type of stuff that you get help with? As your career went on, is that the type of thing that ended up for you? Yeah, I, I, in in his role, I suppose I I come across um, a number of different sports psychologists. Now I wouldn't pigeonhole him into being a sports psychologist. I'd probably say that End is now more of a life coach. Is the is is the category you'd kind of put him into because he can specify in lots of other things outside of sport. Yeah, and he's kind of an organ. I've gone to him and organized different areas of my life and he's just given clarity from that side of things but originally I did go to him because I had a massive lack in conf- lack of, of confidence and I needed to try and rediscover my form it was after the World Cup in 2007 into the 08 season and it hadn't really happened for me and I, I just needed to try and kickstart something so that's why I went to him and I just what I liked about him was I was he was just telling me things that reminding me things that I already knew but he was making me think about them and uh, I never really understood the sports psychology thing with teams because what I found with with teams is the individuals are trying to say things that they feel the the sports psychologist is looking for yeah. rather than being it's like homework as opposed yeah, to exactly yeah. it's like try and get the right answer it's not it's what your what the truth is and that's uh, that's why I like the one on one stuff is because I can be as open and honest as I want to be and I know he's not going to judge me and if I say I'm low you know he's not going to go yeah. or I'm not going to have 20 other guys going oh my god he's low I know yeah <laughs> He's ruined my my own self confidence. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, we're, you know, Janie. Oh, I actually feel a bit low too. Oh, we're all low. We're in a terrible place. <laughs> this worked very well for us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. Thank you, Enda. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's better one on one, definitely. Yeah, it is. It is. And I've, um, yeah, I, I used I, I originally in in '08 when I um, was chatting to him. It was it was to rediscover the form, and then I left him off for a while, and then I went back to him, not. Um, suffering from a, a lack of confidence mm. just because I felt I needed to keep things ticking over and not wait till I needed the yeah. paddock stations to go back and go oh I need some help again but actually go okay and uh, you know what can I improve on what can I get those one or two percent differences how can I arrange certain aspects of my life as it evolves and as it changes and how you've other things other than just your rugby yeah. in your life how can I um, look at the bigger picture and compartmentalize different things that sounds like it's your competitive instinct telling your brain there's actually more that I can do here to be better at what I'm doing yeah I think it, it, there's there's no perfect player and no perfect team and it's I suppose the competitive instinct is to constantly try and get better and you I always like when when Joe came into Leinster it was so exciting because that level of coaching was so it was was brilliant he uh, it just felt as though I was learning something every single day and when that's your that Leinster's your bread and butter and and when you're you're hearing that it's it gives you an excitement to go in and train and go do you know what I'm going to hear something that I haven't heard in the previous 10 years of my career and that's uh, that's a good reason to get up in the morning and that's a good reason to go in and, and enjoy what you're doing yeah it does sound like you're enjoying what you're doing I do I, I love it I love it um, I have like everyone else you have a few brutal Mondays um, but for the most part I don't really I don't see it as work I, not, it's not really I don't see it as work I, I, I love what I do and I love the, um, the, the crack that we have but the competitiveness of all of our training sessions it's yeah. funny how guys um, are able to switch in and out from having a laugh in the dressing room and then you go in and uh, you have some caffeine chewing gum and you get yourself fired up and then Beast yeah, mode. you start you, yeah you start uh, lifting weights and then you can you know you're still able to laugh in between sets and things but then the competitiveness of what's he lifting he plays in the center too oh he's lifting heavier than me I gotta lift heavier and just small things small little wins that's that's what it's all about it's yeah. just getting the edge the, the psychological edge on some people uh, everybody wants me to ask you about retirement but it strikes me that everybody's been asking you about retirement and that actually it's been kind of boring listening to everybody writing you off and saying this is the end this is the end the, the one good part about it has been all the YouTube tribute videos where we just get to sit and, and watch some Brian O'Driscoll porn it's like try try <laughs> try amazing pass brilliant offload so that bit I'm okay with but this kind of like uh, reach a certain age and you we rush you out the door I don't think it's good for us I don't think it's a good way to have a conversation with you about 
your career generally? It's been, to be honest with you, it's been coming for a few years, though that line of questioning. I think you get to a point, you get 30, 31, and then, oh my God, when, you know, when can we retire them? And, um, and why do we do this? Do I don't know what people? it is. I don't know what it is. Because you do see, um, now I suppose you see sports people, um, you see the likes of Ryan Giggs being able to play to 40 next year. You see uh, Brad Thorne, mm. uh, Nathan Hines, um, Simon Shaw is going to be 40 next year. These guys, granted, they're all second rows. But there is an ability, to, if you look after yourself, to play on longer. Uh, and that's the big thing is, is taking care of your body and understanding what works for you and doing more in some areas and less in others. And I think that's where there's a big trust element with the strength and conditioning guys that you're not trying to take you know, the easy option that they know, okay, he yeah. knows him, he knows himself, what's going to work for him getting right for Saturday. So with regard to all the retirement stuff, I, yeah, I, I've, I've been answering them I'm blue in the face and it's, I'm afraid it's the same answer. I'm, I'm just going to leave it to the end of the season and yeah. see how it feels. And I don't feel as though I'm under any pressure to to pull the trigger on, on making the decision. I know I've been given a bit of slack, uh, cut, uh, cut a bit of slack by Leinster because they can't replace me with a foreigner anyway. Um, uh, they've said that publicly. And then uh, with the union, I just said, listen, I need to try and play the Six Nations, see how I feel. And, um, and you know, I'll... I, I'll make the decision when the, when the time is right. Yeah. And I, I can't, I'm not lying to people. I just, and people must be sick of hearing this. Well, they really must. I, well, I'm, I'm, I do think it's terrible that we rush sports people out when ultimately it should be a decision that they get to make um, when it's, you know, I mean, it's, it's such a personal thing because like we again are just sports fans uh, who watch, whereas you guys live this and the void in sports people's lives. And again, we talk to them about it. They're like, yeah, it did take me a long time to get over the fact that my daily routine changed. Now, you've obviously had a lot of business stuff going on in the background anyway, so I think there's probably stuff going on in your head that you can transition maybe a little bit easier than some people. The transition thing is is huge because I've seen people in the past retiring and then going, okay, what will I do now? And and, and struggle. Mm. So I, I decided I definitely, a few years ago, I needed to try and make a tr- transition in a few areas that I had interest and and keep them try and work the early years of those into when the time was right for me to hang up the boots so um yeah a couple of things uh, i i enjoy doing in my downtime uh albeit my downtime over the last month has lessened massively yeah um but um it's uh it is nice to be able to switch away from it um i don't live breathe eat sleep rugby I do enjoy my job but I have an ability definitely to be able to switch away from it and look at other areas of my life yeah so that hopefully that'll be a much easier thing whenever it does happen which mm-hmm. I hope is in a couple of years time as opposed to at the end of the season one final quick question about that uh, last month and, and how it's a life changing event um, my daughter was born the night before you guys beat Australia in the World Cup and I actually I missed the game because I was on the way to the, the Labour Ward but uh, I just remember that first month being really on edge because there's this tiny little thing that you now have responsibility for but also full of boundless energy it's a weird kind of paradox you're edgy and full of energy I don't know how you've managed to also combine playing high level international rugby with that it needs must I think you know you, you, every, every situation is different and this is this, the situation I find myself in I it's it's great that after games it does become irrelevant what you do on a Saturday albeit it's hugely important in your life but not as important as what's happened what, when when, the, when my daughter arrived a month ago so it's exciting to be able to go back uh, home after an international and know that I won't be judged on my performance yeah. because um you know, she's going to need this, the same thing she needed the, the, the previous three weeks. Uh, last weekend, I arrived home with a dead leg, uh, a concussion and a, and a cut ear, and she didn't care much for that. So um, she still wanted her nose bag at 11, 3 and 7, yeah. and I was the man for the job. Yeah, it's kind of hard to hobble around. Luckily, you've got good hands that you're not liable to drop stuff. Yeah, I, I th- but I, I have to say I was delighted to be able to get away from the, the hospital for the, uh, after the first week where I didn't have people judging my speed of nappy changing oh, and feeding and stuff yeah. you know and so I could just do it in my, own, in, my, in my own time yeah. and under no <laughs> pressures or constraints yeah. so that was all good <laughs> that's definitely something that shouldn't be done in the pub- glare of the public one final question then about the Italians um, they've been bloody good at uh, various times in the yeah. tournament so far and we've had uh, really sticky games against them at various stages as well so uh, obviously the whole country expects a win that's uh, the 
brilliant situation you guys find yourselves in we're terrible we're terrible we're terrible but they better still win so mm. the, the usual rational approach from the Irish sports fan yeah um, but I suppose you know looking from our own point of view yeah we've never lost to them in the Six Nations but my god they've run us close um, a number of times particularly a couple of years ago in Italy when, when Raj had to knock over a drop goal with two or three minutes to go Um we uh, yeah we've we've made things hard for ourselves and they've made it hard they've they're I think they're a vastly improved team under Brunel um they've changed their game massively a huge offloading game they're attacking from everywhere they're not afraid to go they're a lot fitter you know they're obviously stronger for having played and be playing in the Rabo week in mm. week out uh, there are other players a lot of their players are playing in France um, so I think it's great for the Six Nations that they are um, as strong as they, they have been. It's just not great for Ireland in the last game when we need a win. Yeah. Uh, but it should make for a pretty bruising encounter. It's always a physical one against them. There are some big men over there and the Olympic Stadium, none of us have played there and it'll be, uh, I think it's sold out and it's going to be a great atmosphere. So um, yeah, it's, um, it's exciting to be uh, involved in those sort of games and um, that's, why, that's why we play it. Brian, Jessica, thanks very much. Thank, pleasure. 